Hello everybody, welcome to the latest episode of Rocksaw Productions, where in this video what we're going to show you is how to go ahead and update the firmware of the RetroTINK 5X. This is a device I absolutely love. It works great, it looks great, it is just, it's amazing. Mike Chi has done a great job on this, and I really appreciate the fact that it's not just a ship and forget kind of thing. He's continuing to do uh, new firmware updates, new features, new benefits as you go through and check it out. Now, to go ahead and update your firmware, you're going to need a few things. Obviously, you're going to need your RetroPink 5X. You're going to need a USB A to C cable that transfers data. And that's important because there's a couple different types of these cables. Some of them will only transfer power. And in trying to do this initially, just to make sure that I had this process down uh, completely, the first cable I grabbed would not transfer data. It would only power the device. You'll also need to get some firmware and some other files, and we're gonna walk you through that right now. So to go ahead and do the firmware update, the first thing you wanna do, head to the RetroTINK website, click on blog, and eventually you will get to the RetroTINK 5X Pro firmware update blog entry. And he has his whole revision history and everything right here. Um, this was updated five days ago from the time of this recording. And this was uploaded June 5th, 2021. Version is 1.24. There's a link here where we can download. We will do that. And one of the things I do whenever I um, do firmware updates, like when I did the Hypercan uh, Retron SQ, I created a folder on my desktop, which you can see right here. And the only thing that's used for is these files. So I'm gonna drag and drop uh, right in here. And one of the things I'm gonna do right away, I'm gonna open up that folder and I'm gonna rename this file folder to uh, Retro Tank 5X1 underscore 24. That way, as I go through the different files, I kind of know what I'm looking at. Um, so we have that. Next up, uh, and it walks you through everything here. He also has a full list as far as some of the changes. So for this 1.24, you get a low pass filter that has four uh, settings, off, light, medium, strong, DTV 858 optimal setting for 40p sources, now uh, enabled for 1440p output models. Scanline generator now has 25, 50, 80, and 100% energy modes. And 40p scan lines can be applied to deinterlaced 480i content. And he has other features here uh, to check out as well. Now to go ahead and do this, I'm going to close this out just to make sure I'm working with the right files again. First things first, we are going to download the FTDID 2XX drivers and install. So we're going to download that. And once it is done downloading, once it is done downloading, there it is. We're going to drag that into that same folder, and which I have right here. And you can see the one in parentheses, that's because I've already downloaded this once before. I actually had some issues in my original recording. So we are going to change the name of that to the FTI or FTDI. And this is just my own personal reference. You're not changing any of the file parameters or anything like that when you do this. So, TDI. And then I need to download the RetroTINK firmware update tool. Same thing. And Mike has all of these files right on his website. So I now have the firmware, I have the drivers, and I have the update tool itself. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is go back up here and uh, plug in your device to your USB port while holding down the menu key. I have my USB cable here. And then when you plug in the micro USB uh, cable onto the back of your unit, you hold down the menu button on the front. So hold that down, plug it in. You hear windows pop up and the LED will light up red. And now run the RetroTINK firmware update tool. So we are going to extract this first, extract all, and there's our two files in that extracted folder. And while we're at it, we're going to just extract all of our files just because we're gonna to need to use them anyways. There's our hex file. Boom, there's all of our uh, files that we need. 
Download the Retro Tank firmware update tool and install by unzipping. And so we are going to go into the update tool and we need to run the RTFW up file. Windows protected my PC. Click more info, run anyways. And that will go ahead and install. It'll ask me again, this is Windows. Do I want this app to uh, make changes to my device? Yep, not a problem. And then we need that guy and the setup. And actually, I should have done this the other way around. But since I already had the files installed, no big deal. So you want to run this first. And that will install all of your drivers for you. Click next. Accept this agreement. Even though I haven't read it, I know the creators of South Park would be disappointed in me. The device drivers are ready to use. Boom. Okay. Now, at this point, the software should have installed. There it is on my other screen. We're going to bring it in here. There is our RetroTank firmware tool. Now, if you go ahead and launch this, and we'll bring this over here, you'll need to search for your device. If it doesn't show up right away, restart your computer just to make sure that uh, if you have any issues with drivers and whatnot, they get the, the install essentially finishes. So uh, we are going to search. Boom, there that is. That is our uh, FT232R USB UART, load the hex. This is the actual firmware that we need to uh, go ahead and install. There's our hex file. And flash. Do not power off your device. Now this is going to take a bit of time because as you can see, there's 18,599 blocks of data essentially that this is flashing. Just let it plug and chug. There's nothing you need to do here. Now at some point, and it, Mike even says this in the instructions here, that um, uh, the device, uh, okay, the update process should start. If the window freezes, it's okay. The update should complete after a minute or two. Just be patient. Uh, if you happen to, say you knock your retro tank off and it disconnects accidentally, it's fine. Just go ahead and reflash it. If you accidentally interrupt the process, just start over from step four, which is to plug into your USB port while holding down the menu button and getting that, that red uh, LED. Now, Bob at Retro RGB also did a video on how to go ahead and take care of this process. I haven't watched his. Uh, I may do that after I do this. It's pretty simple and straightforward, um, but it's one of those things that if you want another voice on this, he does have a, uh, a good way of walking you through this sort of thing. So as you can see here, mine has kind of hung. Uh, I'm getting the circle of death. It's saying not responding. I'm not worrying about it. I'm just going to let it finish its processing. And there we go. Firmware update complete. Not a problem. Let's see if I can start. Yep. Flash programming complete. Programming complete. Rebooting headset, which is basically the unit. Now, I haven't done anything to the retro tank, but you can see the LED is now a different color. So pretty simple process. It'll take you just a few minutes to go ahead and do if you now, if you do have any other questions about this process, features, feature requests, make sure you're following Mike on Twitter right here uh, at RetroTank2. He is very forthcoming. Sorry, I'm finding some allergies. I've got a bit of a <coughs> tickle in my throat right now. Um, very, very good at getting back to people if they do have questions, are looking for clarification and whatnot. And as you can see here, he's, uh, he's a Star Trek nerd, which is good. And Deep Space Nine, best Star Trek ever. Uh, but a pretty simple and painless process to go through and take care of. And now I have additional features that I didn't have to pay for anything extra. So thank you, Mike, for keeping the features coming to this, making it better and better. Although I really wish there was a way I could get the SCART cable to come out and look in the other direction. Now, if you've got any other comments or questions for me, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments section. You can also go ahead and email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. Send me a message on Twitter myself, at Rock Solid Studios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions and Instagram at instagram.com slash GK. Now, if you are looking to pick one of these up, if you haven't had a chance to get one yet, uh, June, July 2021 is when Mike says the next batch should be coming. Please do us all a favor. Do not pay scalpers pricing. They are coming. 
It's just going to take some time. Be patient, kind of like with that firmware flashing tool. Now, if you are looking for additional accessories to go with your retro tank, like a G Scomp or G Scart or Insurrection Industries or HD Retrovision cables, do me a favor, head on over to CastlemaniaGames.com. And the cool thing over there, use promo code ROCKSOLID10. You can save 10% off of most items on the website. Now, if you are looking for additional tutorials, reviews, consoles featured on the RetroTank 2X, those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rock Solid Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel, and you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.